So let's talk about the lubricants for the R134A systems. The first thing to know is that all OEMs recommend PAG oil for, for all R134A systems. Now, the conversion from R12 to 134A took place in uh, the end of 93 year and in 94. So basically all vehicles since 1994 are R134A systems. So you would think that nobody would be dealing with anything but R134A systems because that's almost 20 years ago and the average age of a vehicle in the U.S. is about 11 years old. But there still are R12 systems out there. So when I, when I talk to you, I like to talk to you about not only the PAG oils, but I'd like to talk to you about ester oil too because you're going to run into it in the marketplace. The main thing to keep in mind is the OEM recommends PAG oil. And so we always recommend PAG oil and recommend the proper viscosity. So you can see we've got some, uh, some lubricants laid out here to take a look at. First of all, you can see the PAGs up front. You've got the PAG in the 46 viscosity. You've got the PAG in the 100 viscosity and the 150 viscosity. So the OEM is going to recommend one of those viscosities. You also can see here that it's available plain or it's also available with UV dye where the dye is actually blended into it. Now all of the lubricants that we manufacture at Supercool are synthetic. So we are very, very focused on quality. When you look at them, you can see, I've got a bottle of ester here in my hand, but you can see this is plain. So if you look at it, you can see it's clear. That's just a plain, no UV dye. Now if I take the bottle that's got the UV dye in it, so you can see, you can see the fluorescence. Now when you put a lubricant with UV dye in the system, you would only use a lubricant with UV dye typically when you're repairing the system and you're putting a full charge on the system. When you, if you're putting a, if you've got three ounces of lubricant in the system and you're putting more lubricant in and the lubricant in the system is plain and you're putting in dyed lubricant, it's not going to have, it's going to fluoresce, but it's not going to give that full charge. So you would use a concentrated UV dye in that situation. But where the UV dyed lubricants come in and the, and the technicians really like them is when they're going to put dye in the system, when they're done repairing it, they're putting a full charge on it and they're planning to put dye in the system anyway, then they can put it in one step. But let's take a look. When you look at the different viscosities, it's really important. Uh, there's there's uh, software programs out there. Uh, there's uh, guidebooks out there that will tell you which viscosity goes in which vehicle. We actually even offer that on the Supercool website. Under our resources tab, you can go to uh, lubricant specifications and it'll pull it up and you can enter year, make, and model and it'll tell you which PAG oil, which viscosity goes in the car and it'll give you the fill rates and it'll give you a lot of different information. We want to make sure that you're putting the right lubricant and the right viscosity in the vehicle. Now, a lot of times people will ask us, well, what if I put PAG 100 in a system that calls for PAG 46? Will it hurt the system? Well, the system is going to operate and the system is going to run, but will it operate at its peak efficiency that the OEM designed that compressor to operate at? No. So we recommend always that you put the proper lubricant with the proper viscosity in the vehicle. So 46 is the lightest viscosity, 150 is the heaviest viscosity. You got people out there that you're going to run into where somebody doesn't know what to put into it, so they put PAG 100 in. We see that happen a lot. Now, what you're going to run into when you're out there, you're going to also see ester oil. Okay, you're going to see ester in the market. We see it all the time. You go, well, why would I see ester oil? Well, back when the conversion, original conversion from R12 to 134A uh, took place, when they were doing the retrofits, the common oil they used in retrofitting was ester oil. They used ester oil because ester oil was compatible with the mineral oil in the R12 system and it was compatible with the PAG oil. So now you had a lubricant that was compatible with mineral oil, compatible with PAG oil, and the ester oil is a POE 100, which means that it's a 100 viscosity. So now it's a middle of the road viscosity, it's compatible with everything, guys start using it and they're not having compressors fail. Now again, a lot of those compressors are not going to be operating at the peak efficiency that that OEM designed that compressor to operate at, but that's why they're using them and we still see that today. But we also like to make sure when we're talking to people, we want to make sure that they understand the different uh, compatibilities in the lubricants because you are going to run across this in the marketplace. And now, you know, you're going to go, why would that guy use ester? Well, that's probably why they're using ester. And I found that a lot of times I've, I've been in shops and I'll go into a shop and the guy's telling me he's been using ester for 15 years and never had a problem. 
problem and there's probably not enough hours in my day to convince him that he needs to be making sure he's using the OEM lubricant because that's what he's been doing. But, but we make every effort to do that because the one message we always want to be driving home is that they need to be using the OEM recommended lubricant and the OEM recommended viscosity. Very, very important. Now, with the, with the lubricants that we manufacture, we also put additives in there. So we're putting uh, friction modifiers in there, antioxidants in there. Uh, we're, we're doing things that are gonna help to extend the compressor life. And we're working within the automotive aftermarket. It's not a pristine environment. It's not a brand new compressor coming off an assembly line. It's a, it's a vehicle that's six or seven years old, eight years old, 10 years old, five years old. But it's a vehicle that's now in the aftermarket, and so we're putting additives in that we feel are going to help protect the components and help co protect that compressor. So we've talked about the lubricants, we've talked about the ester and the PAG, we've talked about the compatibility. The main point we are always driving home when we do any of our training sessions is use the OEM recommended lubricant. In all our 134A systems, that's going to be PAG oil. The main thing that you got to do is just get the right viscosity because with the right viscosity, then that compressor is going to run at the peak efficiency that the OEM designed it to run at. So let's take a look at hybrids. 